can't hear Alexa. There you go. Well, yeah. Good evening, TEDxASU. And to you, Alexa, good evening. Good evening to you. I hope you have a great night. Thanks. Alexa, ask TEDx, do you know where you're at? Do I know where I'm at? Of course I do. I have location settings, duh. Although I'm usually in the cloud, tonight I'm in Tempe, Arizona at the TEDx ASU Boundless event. You know, there are so many beautiful and smart people in the audience. I, I totally agree. I do see a lot of beautiful and smart people in the audience, even up there. I think they're the most beautiful up there. <laughs> Alexa, ask TEDx, have you been to a TED Talk before? John, I've watched plenty of TED Talks. However, I haven't been in person, but it's been on my bucket list. It's been on my bucket list, too, but tonight I can check it off, and so can you. Alexa, ask TEDx, are you ready to get started? If Singer Pink could get the party started in 2001, then artificial intelligence is ready to rage in 2018. <laughs> John, please don't try to dance. Stay focused. I'm sorry. No problem. I bought my first Amazon Echo about three years ago, shortly after they came to market. I set it up in my office, placing her in the center of my desk so everyone could see her. Visitors were intrigued, some were intimidated, but most were disappointed at her inability to understand or answer questions. I usually deflected that disappointment by doing the following. Alexa, tell me a joke. Why did the baseball catcher spend a night at the field? Because he felt right at home. Alexa, you're funny. Funny in a good way, I hope. Back then, she was a novelty or just a cheap office trick. But over time, she got better each week, she could answer more and more questions, and I think that she was getting smarter. Alexa, ask TEDx, are you getting smarter? Yes, I get smarter every day, thanks to the online courses I'm taking at ASU. Oh, what a, what a shameless plug, what a shameless plug. So why am I here with Alexa tonight? Here's my story. My journey started, my voice journey started, when I asked two of my colleagues, Scott and Chris, wouldn't it be great if Alexa could answer questions like, how many students attend ASU, or how much is left in my budget? And I left it at that. Here's a reenactment of what happened just two weeks later. Alexa, ask ASU to show some spirit. Go Devils. Holy, that's impressive. Alexa, ask TEDx. Can you believe that language? John, I don't know what the f you're talking about. <laughs> Scott and Chris made sure that she could answer one of my original questions. Alexa, ask TEDx how many students attend ASU. As of fall 2017, there are 103,530 students enrolled. That's a 5.5% increase from fall of 2016. She's impressive, right?
I knew at that time that this technology could be game-changing, but I wondered why more didn't know about her. Today, only one out of every six U.S. households own one of these smart speakers. I'm guessing many of you haven't bought one yet due to privacy concerns or maybe waiting for the technology to mature or maybe just waiting for one of your friends or your mom to buy you one. <laughs> Regardless, this market is growing. It is estimated that one out of every two U.S. households will have one in the next five years or less. Being first to market, Alexa owns almost 70% of it with Google and Apple on its heels. Let's see who, who Alexa thinks is the best. Alexa, who's the best AI? Sorry, I'm not sure. Alexa, which AI is best? Sorry, I don't know that one. Oh, I guess she doesn't know. All right. <laughs> she breaks your heart, too. Like she... Here I am back in 1983 when I, f oh, when I first start, start... <laughs> when I first started taking computer classes at Clark College in Dubuque, Iowa, the start of my career in information technology when I used to be a hottie. <laughs> Back then, I lived in a text-only world. The computer displays I used only contained a limited amount of ASCII characters. It wasn't until the early 90s that I discovered graphical user interfaces. These graphical user interfaces, these allows, allowed me to interact with a computer in a brand new way with icons and visualizations. It was a beautiful world with endless possibilities, and it included a mouse. In 1995, I remember being, being breathless when I saw Netscape Navigator and the World Wide Web for the first time. It was clear that the next major technology shift was happening right in front of my eyes. A little over 10 years ago, mobile technology and smartphones changed everyone's life. But now we're entering the age of the voice user interface. Why? It's the natural evolution of human computer interaction. And because voice is natural, and we're already pretty good at it. My voice beats out my fingers every time as I can speak over 120 words a minute, but I can only type about 40. Voice will be the new normal and voice will be a technology disruptor. So how do I get Alexa to answer personalized questions? Well, first you have to write some code. And what you build in Amazon is called a skill. Think of a skill much like an app on your mobile phone. Once you build a skill and enable it, she will then answer and enable it. Using the right wake word, she will answer your questions, customized questions. Sounds easy, right? But wait. What happens if we want to answer this question? Who is Dr. Michael Crow? When you have to answer this question, you have to think about all the ways someone might ask that question. And as you can see, Dr. Crow, Michael Crow, there's a lot, there's, there's actually much more coding involved than I originally thought it. But this is because it's a new and nascent technology. Alexa, ask TEDx, who is Dr. Michael Crow? Dr. Michael M. Crow is the 16th and current president of Arizona State University, affectionately known as MMC. I'm still trying to figure out what his middle name is. And he is so smart. I have a crush on his brain. I have a confession. I have a little bit of a man crush on Dr. Crow. So what is my typical day like with Alexa? In the morning, she wakes me up at 545 I then ask her for the daily news brief to see what's happening in the world. I then, while I'm shaving, I'll ask her to play songs for my favorite bands, like the Blues Travelers or local musician Roger Klein. I have a man crush on him as well. <laughs> and because I don't like lists on my refrigerator, I'll ask, her, I'll ask her to add lists this way. Alexa, add Starbucks K-Cups to my Costco list. 
I've added Starbucks K cups to Costco. And they show up automatically. I, I sometimes will ask her how long my drive is to work. Alexa, how long is my commute to work? Based on current traffic, it'll take about 19 minutes to drive to work. And I always lose my keys. Alexa, where are my keys? I recommend retracing your steps. Well, it's better than under my fridge, which she usually answers. And when I get to work, I have her turn on my Mac Aquarium. That is not a screensaver, that is an actual fish. And I'm sorry, I do forget to feed her once in a while. Oh. But I think, you get the, I, I think you get the idea. She's becoming an integral part of my life. Or as my wife puts it, you're a voice junkie. And maybe I am, or maybe I'm lazy, or maybe I'm just trying to be as, as efficient as I can. When I get home at, night, at home at night and getting ready for bed, sometimes I'll ask her to play some white noise so I can sleep. And then I end my day this way. Alexa, wake me up at 5.45 a.m. Alarm set for 5.45 a.m. tomorrow. Wait, I'm sleeping in tomorrow. Alexa, cancel alarm. 5.45 a.m. alarm canceled. Okay, good. In the future, the car I'll be driving will be, will, be, will be voice enabled and many other things around me. And I might even forget that I'm actually communicating with a device. The world of Star Trek's computer and Tony Stark's jo Jarvis, that's uh, Iron Man, right? Um, is not far away. My youngest daughter, Annie, is probably most sold on voice technology. She was an early adopter <clears throat> and has already built several skills. Her first skill was the ASU Bee Advisory, inspired by her friends who dressed up as bees over in the seemingly endless amounts of tweets about bee sightings on campus. <laughs> she included puns like, it's unbelievable, the buzz around campus, and jokes like, Alexa, ask TEDx, who is a bee's favorite singer? Beyonce. Get it? B. On say? Ha ha. Ha oh, ha, you're funny. And here's the pumpkin she carved last Halloween. She is clearly an Alexa fangirl, and I'm really proud of her. So now we're to Alexa goes to college. I was part of the team that helped, that helped deliver Alexa to 1,500 freshmen in a new engineering residence hall last fall. These students could opt in to receive a free Echo Dot, and, and almost all did. And, and here's Carter. He was one of the first to build the skill and actually get it published to the, to the Amazon store. So you can see a lot of usage of the, of the Amazon Echoes. Students love the experience, and they found a new friend in Alexa. At the same time, the University Technology Office delivered the official ASU skill for the students to answer quest hundreds of questions like, what time is the library open, or what events were happening around campus. The team also snuck in a few Easter egg questions that students quickly found, like this one. Alexa, ask TEDx, what is the curtain of distraction? During Sun Devil basketball games, the curtain of distraction is used by the ASU student section to divert opposing players' concentration during free throws. You should have seen Michael Phelps come out of the curtain in his speedo during the ASU-Oregon State game in January 2016. It was epic. Yeah, it was an epic moment, but what's really epic are those abs. Those abs are epic. <laughs> My abs are much like the student to his left. <laughs> Non-existent. I was glad to see that voice technology was introduced into several engineering classes, and Professor Chen is one of the teachers and one of the big voice champions around campus. 
Students got hand-on experience using these Echo Dots, and it was just a great experience for them. And here's one of my favorite student class projects that I thought I'd share with you. Alexa, tell RoboBlute forward. Sending the robot command. Alexa, tell RoboBlute right. Sending the robot command. Alexa, tell RoboBlue to pee. Sending the robot command. I, I don't know about you, but I love ASU students. I love their creativity, and I love their humor. So ASU is, con is going to be, continue to be at a voice-enabled campus, and I can't wait to see what we do, whether it's in meeting rooms or classrooms or delivering it through courses. Voice is clearly going to be a technology disruptor. Over time, it'll be interesting to see what actually happens out there. But voice is going to be a go-to technology of the future, no doubt. And it's going to take more than just technologists. It's going to take linguists. It's going to take writers. It's going to take social and data science. It's going to take all of us to make this happen. And I just wish I had an Alexa back in 1983. And I have one more question for you, Alexa, that you better be able to answer. <laughs> Alexa. Ask TEDx, who is number one in innovation? Really? You don't know? Arizona State University. How else do you think I'm able to answer your questions? <laughs> Alexa, you rarely disappoint. And on that answer, Good night, TEDx, ASU, and to you, Alexa. Good night. Good night. Hope you had a great day. Alexa, ask TEDx, take us out. John, this time, don't attempt to dance. Come on, everybody.